Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric and today I'm talking about uh, my last few days I spent in Las Vegas. Uh, I was out there for StarCast, All Elite Wrestling's Double or Nothing pay-per-view, and a slew of Cirque du Soleil and Spiegel World show, uh, shows that I really, really enjoyed. Um, so it's a, it's a lot to talk about, so I'm going to try to make this uh, pretty quick talking about each thing. Um, I absolutely recommend the Spiegel World shows, Opium and, and Absinthe. They are both so, so fun. Um, Opium I liked a little bit more because I love science fiction, and it's the, the whole thing is a cheesy 50, like 50s, 60s B-movie style, but with uh, lots, of, lots of raunchy humor, uh, a little bit of nudity, and there's, at least when I saw it, there was an amazing little chihuahua that did all kinds of his of tricks with his uh, with his trainer or his teammate or whatever you want to call him. Um, so yeah, look up some clips. Look up the Bubble Man from uh, from Opium. Uh, it's mesmerizing. Like I I I actually watched it, the whole thing again uh, because there is a full clip of it. Um, uh, of his whole routine um on youtube and it is fantastic i should look up what the guy's actual name is but he's just called the bubble man or something on on the the, the show clips and stuff like that but um yeah go go check out opium and absinthe they are awesome and it's really really easy because um uh, i recommend this uh because o is awesome is is really freaking awesome um o is at the bellagio right north of there is caesar's palace and right south of there is the cosmopolitan um so if you see o at the 7 30 show it's really easy and you have time to get some some food and stuff like that um to see o and then go and see either absinthe or opium after that because the 7 30 show is uh you have the 7.30 show there, or the 7 o'clock show there, and then you have a 10 o'clock show for either Opium or Absinthe. gives you plenty of time in between, and uh, Bellagio is right in between those. So if you're looking for one night of two awesome shows, that's what I recommend. Um, I more so recommend uh, O followed by Opium. A double O, as it were. So... Uh, yeah, I, I saw O for a second time. Um, this time I was not up against the wall. I was right in the center, which was awesome for the most part, except that they have uh, a bank of spotlights, not like spot, a, a bank of lights, uh, center stage in the far back um, that are on for a lot of the time. And uh, at least from my vantage point, which is up in the balcony, uh, that in, in the center, those are shining right towards you. Um, so that could be an issue if you if the light thing is uh, a potential problem. It didn't bother me too much, but I did think about it a, a few times. Um, but uh, other than that, oh my god, oh is so good. It's so good. I I this for the moment confirmed that. O is my favorite of the Cirque du Soleil shows in Las Vegas. Um, but then later on the weekend, I went and saw Ka, and I have to say that is my new favorite because um, all of the shows are fantastic. They have so many great acts in them and everything. But Ka, in my opinion, is the only Cirque du Soleil show that I've seen that has an actual story all of them have a, an actual story but this this one has an actual story from top to bottom and every single act that i saw in that show and i don't know if they maybe mix it up maybe some acts are in there some nights and not others but every single act on the night that i saw it uh so i have to imagine that this is always the case it all served the story it all was uh, part of the action of the story it all is justified by the story moving forward and i thought that was really really well done 
and i would love to go see that show again um uh maybe with the i i uh, i had a pretty close up seat but there's a lot of stuff that happens uh like in the theater itself that um would be really cool to see from a f- from further back um and now i realize uh, a lot of the a lot of the theaters the best seats like you have like the most expensive seats sections and a lot of times it's it's not in the front it's uh like in the middle um like halfway up going up into uh going up the risers so um and that makes sense because a lot there's a lot of stuff that takes place um out into the theater and you're able to take in everything a little bit better from um further back in a lot of cases uh i mean the very front rows would be super awesome for that show as well because uh there's a um, a semicircle stage like a rim to the stage that a lot of action takes place a lot of fight scenes and stuff go on there and actually (laughs) it's a really funny thing is that they uh some of the performers started to come out and the ushers told, told everyone around us oh wait now cell phones no put them away now there's none of that for the from here to the end of the show um and then this guy sits sits down in front of front of me um like uh, kind of over to the side and he starts taking pictures with the flash on and I'm like what are you doing I'm, I'm like starting i'm actually starting to get mad at this guy and then the performers get mad at him and then i realize oh he's 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 one of them he's this is this is the whole thing that they're doing they take his phone they throw their phone into the pit uh because a lot of the time the stage just falls down into a, a big pit behind it um and uh then they threw him over the side into the pit it, it was it was really good they got me they really got me there so good, <laughs> good job i i'm glad that i didn't actually say something that i would have been kind of kind of embarrassed about that because i was almost like hey man stop it quit taking pictures <laughs> they said to put the cameras away um also i had totally forgotten that this show uh i i loved kuza mainly because of the wheel of death and i had forgotten that ka also has a wheel of death but with a uh, another set a triple wheel of death behind them they didn't they didn't do all the crazy stuff on, on the triple wheel but um man i absolutely loved that it was so freaking awesome it's i i i could watch that just all day every day um the wheel of death look it up look it up but i really really liked that it was teased throughout the entire show and this goes into the whole storyline thing that it was part of this like if if, if, the wheel of death made sense for the story and then it 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 was amazing like it i'm just blown away by how how everything fits together in this show um and i can't recommend it enough it's so awesome also really cool uh i didn't go up to talk to him or anything um but at first i saw um aja kong outside of the theater and then uh also outside of the th- there was probably a whole bunch of other people but also outside of the theater was kenny omega and uh that was pretty pretty cool um that they were there i've i've uh seen wrestlers at Cirque du Soleil shows in the audience more than I've seen uh just wrestlers like outside not in the audience but you know uh outside of the theater outside of the arena um I've seen wrestlers more outside of shows than I've seen uh outside of wrestling shows that's kind of interesting I think um that's not necessarily true because I saw a bunch a bunch of wrestlers um before the the New Japan show in in uh at the Cow Palace uh, cause I got there like way, t- way, way, way too early. I was like sixth person in line and it was just sitting there for like four. It was stupid. It was, it was dumb how early I was for that show. But, um, anyway, um, what was I saying? Okay. So early in the show, they have like a, a, a mini wheel of death, like grinder that they put a skull in 
and grant I, this is all spoilers for Cobb. It, it's it's all, even if you know what happens in the show it's still so freaking awesome um it, it, and they grind up this skull and it makes like gunpowder it's crazy and then um and then they tease it like <laughs> uh, like halfway through the show um or maybe not like halfway but anyway they tease it again like they actually show it like it's there but then the curtains draw back over it after uh, a whole thing happens in front of it and i'm like oh dang it <laughs> they're saving it again for the next next section um and uh it was like a whole thing with like these little little, little imprisonment pods and things like that it's oh it's uh, i love this show it's great um and the comic book does not really do it justice i've i've i ordered i think i probably have the third one in my mailbox right now but um i got the first two issues of the the three special promotional um ca comic books and um yeah it seemed like pretty cool is is interesting enough but it it does absolutely does not do justice to the, the to the show itself like it does do a good job of like presenting the story a bit more there is opening narration in uh but it's just like the introduction everything else is all just present like you can you can, you can tell what's going on um er, from everything after that you don't need narration or uh dialogue or anything but um uh yeah the comic book is pretty cool um but i would love to see i haven't talked about this before but i would love to see a cirque du soleil comic book that's like done in watercolor um especially like stephanie hans's style her style in the style of stephanie hans um i really like all of her artwork and she does w watercolors and um i would love to see cirque du soleil show a Cirque du Soleil comic book um, done in that style. That would be really cool. Um, so, yeah, I think that's I think that's enough about uh, Cirque du Soleil shows and the Spiegel World shows. All awesome. I absolutely re recommend all of them. Um, I I kind of regret. I, I, I was tempted. I was like in the audience still as when I realized oh this show is going to be over by nine o'clock um because it's over at like 8 50 uh double or nothing was uh because it started at four the kickoff show or the pre-show the buy-in started at four o'clock um i absolutely there were some tickets left i could have gone to see Ka uh a night early at the 9 30 show um but uh if i if i didn't end up liking it then I would have been stuck watching it two times, but how impossible would that have been to be stuck not like to, to, to not like it? Um, and the the ticket was pretty cheap on on that Saturday night show too um, that I found on there. But uh, I did not pull the trigger on that, and so I got went went back to the hotel and got some sleep. Um, so now let's talk about the wrestling stuff. Even though I did already kind of mention some wrestling stuff, it bleeds into everything nowadays. Um, but, uh, I went to, um, uh, well, first of all, I was able to get, uh, the platinum star cast and double or nothing package, um, because a, an internet friend, uh, Mike, he, uh, posted on the, the WrestleMania plans, travel plans, um, chat that he had an extra, um, Starcast Platinum Bundle, and I said, "Yeah, uh, uh, I'm interested. I was really only looking to go if I was able to get that package when it first came out. By by, by the time I looked, uh, I saw it, and I that I went to the site and all that, they were sold out. So that's why I was like, ah, well, I'm just not gonna go to that whole thing then. Um. Uh. Well, well, that was after the uh, actual, um." regular tickets went on sale um i wasn't really all that interesting just going for that one show even though it's las vegas why would i i, I don't know why i just didn't think i'll just go for the one day then i think i figured that it was just going to be really really expensive because it's memorial day weekend 
and it kind of was. But, um, yeah, so I, I, it was a, kind of a spur-of-the-moment thing. I mean, a spur a spur of the moment thing at like at saying that I'd be interested in buying tickets and, and actually uh, working that out. Um, it was weeks and weeks ahead of time um, from the actual show happening. So it wasn't like I decided the day before the show to go out. But anyway, um, the platinum take the platinum bracelets. Um, that was nice because I got really great seats for all of the panels that I went to. Um, some of the panels I went to was, uh, uh, a Q and a with sting. That was really, really great. Um, there's one with Brett Hart. There was, uh, one with Arn Anderson. Um, who else? There's one with Dustin. Um, I, I was actually wanting to go to talk as Jericho live, uh, during that time period, but uh jericho after after the show after double or nothing he was uh mad at the fans and, and mad at aw for not thanking him so he called it off um and so it, it was a kind of a funny thing that uh there's just a cardboard cutout of him they played the clip of him on instagram saying they wasn't gonna do it and then uh like a fan goes up onto the stage and he's like well, let's have a show then. And then uh, I think it was Matt Stryker. He comes up and he's like, what are you doing? Where are you? Get, get out of here. And um, he entertained. He, 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 he played off of the drunk guy a little bit. Um, but then they said, you know, uh, we're sorry. This isn't happening. Uh, there's no talk as Jericho. But go next door to the Dustin, Dustin Rhodes panel. And uh, that was really good because the match that he had with Cody was pretty fantastic. And, um, well, I'll talk about that in just a second. There was also a women's wrestling panel with Lita. That was great. Um, there was a 83 Weeks with Eric Bischoff panel um, that had a whole bunch of guys uh, from WCW uh, and also um, a guy named Guy who wrote the book Nitro, and I bought a copy of that book the next day. I had him sign it, all that. That was awesome to meet him. Um, that I am, I'm really looking forward to reading that book because I don't know if I've mentioned this. Uh, maybe I've mentioned it in passing before. I don't know, but uh, when I first got into wrestling back in like middle school, so like 97, 98, whatever, um, I watched uh, primarily – like almost a hundred percent WCW at first. Um, it's slowly as it started to get into WWF a little bit more. And, uh, so I w was a little bit familiar with some of the, some of the stuff going on over there, but it was, I was mostly about the WCW Goldberg and the NWO and sting. I loved all those guys. So that, that's why it was really awesome to see sting and um him talk about his career and everything but um and and that's why i'm really looking forward to to reading nitro and i just um i could i i could just listen to and watch documentaries about wcw like all the time um because it's such fond memories of it but um at the same time it kind of bothers me how much how much attention is given like how much it's talked about like all the time like all weekend it seemed like it was all about um wcw talking about uh, uh aw in, in comparison to that kind of and the attitude era and everything when it's supposedly supposed or, or it's it's a revolution it's a brand something brand new it's nothing all of that I'm sounding like I'm complaining. I, I am a little bit, but it's uh, for that being like the, the, the central, the, the, the central mission statement kind of thing. Like this is new. It's different. It's uh, an alternative. All that kind of thing. It seems for that, for that, that old stuff is, is still referenced a lot. It's still talked about a lot and it's still, and it f feels really, um a lot of the panels and this i it's it's it was stuff said by people who are not under 
the the control of AEW exactly uh, or at all um but the, just like the the is very I don't know. At times it felt uh, self-indulgent or like uh, um, like over, I don't know, like, I don't know what the word I'm, I'm looking for. Um, like the people that are talking about um, how it's going to be, they're, a, a phrase that I kind of heard a lot throughout the weekend was like, Vince better watch out. He's got to learn. He's better learn from this. Like that kind of stuff. I was absolutely like from like the second time that I heard it, which is probably like on, on, on Friday morning. Um, I was just sick of hearing that. Like, I don't, why if, if being something different and being something new and all that, you just stop referencing the stuff that you're being different and new from just be the new and different thing. And I don't see why we have to keep on talking. And I'm talking about it right now. And I hope that I'd never, after this, I'm going to try as much as I can to not talk about it in that way that they got to learn. Well, they're, you know, that that kind of stuff <laughs> like comparing the two um as far as like uh like sticking it to them like that kind of comparing like uh see what they do about that like that kind of, i don't i don't know i i it's hard to avoid it's impossible to avoid like if you if i'm if i am talking about if i'm watching both and i'm talking about both uh i gotta compare it compare them because i compare stuff to everything um but i'm not going to go down that route of uh, take a page from this book you gotta learn something let's stick it to it that kind of stuff okay so i'm gonna stop it with that right now um and that was like my biggest complaint there is one particular guy who uh was like an interviewer for some of the panels he was uh just a participant on one uh, I'm not going to say what his name is. He, he probably could figure out who it is. Um, he's just the most annoying person that was appeared on any of these panels. But um, it seemed seemed very much like, well, actually, like that kind of guy. I don't know. Maybe I'm that kind of guy, too. I don't know. If I am, I'm sorry, because that's super annoying. And... Um, yeah, so some of the panels I think I would have enjoyed even a lot more if I if that guy was on them. But um, the Sting panel was fantastic. But then my uh, my absolute favorite ended up being the final panel that I went to, which was Kenny Omega after a screening of Omega Man, a documentary about him and Kota Ibushi and, and um, kind of the rise uh, uh, of them and going into the into all in and all that kind of stuff it was a really good documentary and the q a afterwards was awesome and uh, also got a high five kenny and um and then later on so i'm outside of con but uh yeah the answers he gave compared to a lot of the other stuff talking about aew the answers he gave were so good and we're so different from everybody else's and gotta be honest i i don't di i don't dislike cody and the young bucks but like i i don't watch it for them i they they're not what gets me interested in AEW and uh new japan pro wrestling uh for all in they weren't the ones that got me interested in that is Kenny Omega like it's always been Ken, it's always been uh, this weird phrasing of that but um Kenny like he any negative feelings that I felt that I just talked about about all the other talk about what they're doing and all of that was canceled out and then kind of um canceled out and then some 
uh, by Kenny. Like I really, really like him and uh, I can really get behind him. And I kind of regret that I didn't buy a Kenny Omega t-shirt. Um, but there's going to be plenty of chance to do that as well. I bought way too many shirts this weekend. Way too many. Um, I have even getting uh, just a plain AEW shirt at the MGM Grand uh, like gift shop out in the lobby. Because they had just that shirt there. I was like, oh, maybe I should get one um, for if I go to a, another one of these events. Uh, since they announced that All Out will be uh, Memorial, not Memorial, this is Memorial Day, um, Labor Day weekend in September, or August, whatever, August 31st, I think, so, um, but, uh, yeah, Kenny, Kenny is, is the man, and the hype is real, and uh, to hear him just talk about, he, he got really teared up talking about Kota Ibushi, and um ubushi is real deal as well and they're both just super awesome and uh and actually uh, marty scroll also i him and kenny and ubushi are my three favorites out of uh that bunch um and and then i think i've talked about that that uh zach Sabre jr is so freaking good he's so freaking good oh my god as far as new japan goes uh as i haven't watched uh, since i think i did i watch wrestle kingdom i think i did maybe i didn't but um i haven't watched really any new japan um since all in the whole all in every not, not since all elite all of that um but i uh so mostly guys i was interested in what i just said um aren't there anymore but uh you, you still have zach saber jr i think it's just awesome and um there are a few people that i'm really interested in now so let's talk about uh moving on from starcast i did not do any meet and greets i already just spent so much uh money on all the other stuff uh going to all the shows and everything is like i i have the the platinum bracelet and the ticket to the show that's en enough having spent spent on here i'll buy some t-shirts also but um uh over on the show double or nothing um i got there in plenty of time got into the show it was great uh it was fine getting in um mgm grant mgm grand in general is is pretty crazy it's it, it's huge um there's lots of stuff there and there's lots of lots of food there which is nice um, actually I ended up watching, I guess I should talk about this real quick, or maybe I can't talk about, it. I watched a pilot for a TV show, which I suspect was a Chuck Lorre show. I don't think they even showed the credits. Maybe, uh, I don't know if that's a normal thing for, for pilot testing, but, um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say what the show is. It was okay. It was okay. I was like, they had like the knob where you, you, you set it to, between one and a hundred like throughout the show keep it moving around and um yeah it was generally about 50 out of 50 for me um it was, it was a little bit better at times a little bit worse at times it's not something that i would actually watch when it comes out but um if it comes out even but um yeah i guess i should look that up and see i i suspect it's a chuck Lorre show it really felt like one if it if it isn't one of his shows, it was somebody that was trying to to make a show like that, and uh, they're su successful at making that type of show, but that's not the type of show that I really enjoy. Um, anyway, that was at Television City, which is in the MGM Grand, and I got like a little booklet of um, coupons to use, so I tried to use a couple of those. It may be. It, I probably would have been better off not using them at all, but I did buy a DEO shirt, Department of Extra Normal Acti Operation or whatever, from from Supergirl, the 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 agents the agency that she works for, um, because they they had uh, like a CW section and stuff like that. It was a pretty small store, so it was really like the section that I'm talking about was just like the 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 side of a 
end cap type of thing. Anyway, um, so if you do go there, um, look for Television City. And if you, ha- if you have some time to kill, because this is like a daytime thing, um, go and check out a pilot or two or whatever. See if they're, see if they're uh, doing some, some market testing there. Um, I thought it was, it was pretty interesting. Even though I didn't really enjoy the show, it was cool to see the process and to, you know, be able to give some actual input on on a new show that wasn't very good. But anyway, uh, so Double or Nothing. Speaking of shows that were, <laughs> it was a really good show. It was really good. I was, um, at times I was not so into it. Um, and I was like kind of, kind of uh irked by some things i guess you could say uh like uh there's the tag team match that um i was just i was just questioning their choice of of ring gear because both teams they're wearing black with uh fluorescent yellow yes one was fluorescent yellow with green one was fluorescent yellow with blue but that was still i mean still too close for me Especially being there live without commentary, talking about who's I, I was get I got confused a few times. I mean, I guess that is my fault in a way because I'm not familiar with these guys. But then again, this is also the first show of this promotion. Um, you know who you're fighting. I I don't know. I don't know. I I I wouldn't have had any problem with that match at all if the two teams didn't look all dressed the same. Not the same, but like that they, like they could have had separate part. They could have swapped partners, and it would have made as much sense, uh, color and gear wise, because they didn't match each other exactly. Neither of the teams matched each other exactly. They were all different from each other. They just had the common colors, and so that's that's my that's like my big complaint about the whole thing is that is the, the ring gear for that match is confusing me. I don't like it. It made me upset. Anyway, we had the uh, casino, uh, 21-man casino battle royale. That was pretty cool. Uh, Adam Page won that by last eliminating MJF. Um, I did notice, um, so one of the things about being there live, that there isn't a big uh, Titantron thing, uh, big screen in the center of the arena, but they do have them on the outside. So I would look over there occasionally. But I was the the seats are really good. I think all the seats in the entire arena were pretty good, um, for what I could tell. But I was maybe like twelve rows up into the risers, uh, a little bit off to the side, but uh, still gr- like a great view of the whole show. Um, what was I saying? Um, oh, so I I could see, uh, there's a there was a moment when. Uh, Joey Janela got a cigarette, a lit cigarette stapled to his forehead by Jimmy Havoc. And that was like, that was probably my favorite moment of the match. It was not on the broadcast from what I could tell. They were focused on a whole thing going on with Glacier and somebody else. Um, yeah, that was, that was a, a huge miss there. I think, uh, everybody would have loved to see that at home, but, um, that was, I guess it was just just for us on the on that side of the arena that I could see that going on. Um but yeah, this uh this uh this battle royale was really fun. I I was not familiar with Orange Cassidy at all, but he absolutely won me over. I enjoy him immensely and uh I would go back and watch this uh match just to see more of him, just to watch whatever he was doing if he was shown very much um but otherwise i enjoyed just being able to watch him there live and i look forward to seeing more of him i'm gonna have to look up more of his matches uh, i watched like a feature at, about him talking about how he wanted to be different and all that kind of thing and bring comedy to it but like comedy grounded in wrestling and that kind of thing i re- he yeah he's 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 doing some good stuff i i like it i like it um the other match kip sabian versus sammy guevara um i apologize for any names that i mispronounce um i did not hear any of the commentary throughout the night obviously uh being there in the arena 
So um, a lot that that was another thing with the people that are new um, that unless people around me were talking about them that I did not was not able to learn their names or to match up the names with the people in uh, like the, the six man tag six man six woman tag team matches that type of stuff. But um, also Luchasaurus, I thought it was really cool, and um, I, I I've liked Jimmy Havoc anyway, um, but he did some some uh, really fun stuff in this match, and um, man, who else was in there? Who else was in there? We don't have a list on here, do we? No, the Wikipedia page doesn't list everybody that's in there, but um, that's okay um yeah kept sabian versus sammy guevara um they were pretty interesting in the the weigh-in oh i didn't talk about the weigh-in um yeah it was okay it was okay let i don't i I don't talk about the weigh-in it was um i i feel like if they're that it should have had better they they shouldn't have just relied on the starcast's production to do it that it should have been part of their the AEW's production I think and that just happened to be at the venue that Starcast was at because it's kind of the finale of the day um to conclude the evening um there at Caesar's Palace I've I I I I think I hope that in the future if they do that that they up the um they they bring in their production people to make it part actually part of their product more i think oh, i just hate that I, I hate that i just used the word product damn it um anyway uh we had socal uncensored versus strong hearts uh so christopher daniels Frankie kazarian and scorpio sky they defeated the strong hearts who are sima t hawk and al lindeman Linde, lindeman um crap i don't really remember any, much from this match um i think i enjoyed it um the problem with like the first half of the show i i've been saying I, i've been telling people like from the six woman tag team match to the end i absolutely loved it um but i think a huge part of that was was that the last three matches the people behind me finally shut up like for longer than a minute at a time and uh because they were basically like they it felt like i was sitting in front of a live audio feed of a reddit thread like just the reddit conversation going on uh just all like the stuff that i already talked about that kind of thing um that i said i wouldn't be that i wouldn't mention myself but uh you know comparing and you know going into the in-depth business of it and like uh they're really 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 in trouble now and things like that and um and then like one moment in this next match um Britt baker versus nyla rose versus kylie ray and then also the surprise that awesome kong was in there as a fourth member a fourth competitor that was awesome um but uh yeah because there's a whole thing about uh cody said something uh something about bailey and then like the guy behind me is like how is he better than bailey and then proceeded to like have a conversation with the person next to him instead of actually paying attention to the match to watch the person that they just uh gave praise to for being better than bailey like did you you just wanted to say that to get some get some laughs from the people around and get some attention and then not even pay attention to the actual match yourself that's like that's real cool real cool thing to do um so yeah that that kind of stuff really bothered me throughout um and i think kind of hindered my enjoyment uh quite a bit like I may maybe may have enjoyed this whole thing a lot more not being there in person just because of those people right behind me. I don't know. But uh then we had the best friends, Chuck Taylor and this this the tag team match that I was talking about. Because I don't I'm not familiar with any of these guys. So I I I don't know 
it I could I I I was able to keep track of who they were, but it was work. It was it was work. Um because of the similarity of their color schemes. But uh best friends Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta defeated Angelico and Jack Evans. Um I there is some good stuff. There is some good stuff in the in, in this match. But again, the people behind me saying saying stuff throughout it like yeah yeah i mean i can i don't need to, to address that anymore um the six woman tag team match uh hikaru shida rio abe and rio mizunami defeated aja kong yuka sakazaki and um emi sakura um this match was really i i really really enjoyed this match um the only complaint i have is that the is the 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 officials screwing up stuff um uh with the referee and the timekeeper a couple of of uh, mess ups throughout that um but the as the the actual wrestlers were so fantastic uh throughout this match and i thought that they did an amazing job and i want to see more of all of them um i, I can't even remember any specifics from this match um to talk about um uh, unfortunately the only specifics i remember is the, like the mess ups of it um with the the there's kind of the, the referee counted three and said so it was two and then later on the ref uh or the the timekeeper rang the bell when it was only a two count and it was not a a mess up on the referee's part at all it's like how like just just watch the ref and then when they point to you like that's they're telling you yeah that's th that's it i'm pointing at you ring the bell that's it not oh that looked like three to me ding 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 stupid stupid um man i wish i I can remember more about the actual match that went. Well, there's so much cool stuff. I, I remember just loving this match. And then the other thing was that somebody like two rows in front of me, the they were talking about Sasha and Bailey a lot during this match, and or like right before this match, they were talking about them. I think. And then, the like this whole group of like four people like just get up and be like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm bored to death right now, or something like like a minute into this match like shut like that's fine if you if you're not interested in the match but and you want to go take a you know use the restroom or whatever get some food you don't have to exclaim it loudly as you leave like, oh, that is boring. Mm -hmm. hate i hate that i hate that but it does it doesn't just happen at this show like that, that, that kind of stuff happens at, at other shows too um so i'm not trying to make it out to being that it's only because it was this show that this stuff is happening it's i i want to get the word out there like don't be like that at any shows because it's super annoying for everybody i think except for the people that, ugh. anyway um i did really enjoy that match and even though i can't remember specifics from it at the moment it's been a long it, it's been a long couple of days um and i just got home like an hour ago but um i think that that was the, that was the match that i enjoyed the most i wouldn't necessarily say it's the best match but i enjoyed i i got the most enjoyment out of it out of anything uh because then we, then we had cody versus dustin which was awesome but the there's so much blood that just me personally i i i was thinking about it so much and worried about it like i that's that's so much blood and that's so it's so much blood <laughs> like that's like like that's so much blood that's that's so that's so much so much blood everywhere it's everywhere it's all it's everywhere yeah they're brothers that's fine it's still that's so much blood everywhere 
It's every and there's so much blood everywhere. So yeah, it was it was a fantastic match. And um I could I would not argue that is the best match of the night. It is not my favorite match of the night. And I did not enjoy the match as much as other ones just because there's so much blood and that's like all I could think about for parts of it and but it was still, it was it was fantastic don't it, it's so much blood okay there's so much blood um okay then we had the young bucks versus the lucha brothers um some really cool stuff in this match um but uh i keep saying i keep saying i keep, keep doing that I'm sorry this what there was there was really cool stuff in this match um and I enjoyed it quite a bit. There's too, too so many kickouts, and this seems like a lot of people agree with it. I, I saw this comment a lot um, after um, after I messaged a couple of people. I went online and saw the conversations. Like, there's so many kickouts, and um, I don't think the problem so much is that there are so many kickouts, but or or so many near falls. But there wasn't a var- variety of those near fall, like uh, those those pins could have gotten broken up. Um, maybe one or two of them could have been rope breaks instead, and I think that would have just been enough to not be a noticeable thing. That oh, he just got hit by what would I feel like is a finisher. But, and they should be dead right now, and then they kick out, that kind of thing. And then there's also one moment where uh, two of the guy, one of the Bucks and one of the Lucha Bros, just pop right up and did like a, like a double lariat into each other real quick or something. I don't know. And then they were down again, and or like knocked down on the ground for a, a few seconds or whatever. Um, but uh, those those were the two things that popped out to me that uh, took me out of enjoying the match a little bit. But some su- really cool stuff that we did see. Uh, there was like a big series of suplexes by I think it was I think it was Matt. But um, that was re- that was really nice to see see that. And then um, this huge combination. I forget if it was. Oh, I forget if it's Phoenix or Pentagon, but uh, he was like up on, he's like up on the ropes, and he had uh like hold of one of the Bucks' hands, and then he like did his jump thing down to the bo- second rope, and then bounced back up, and then went into like a whole, it was like a Hurricane Rana off the top at the same time as an arm drag type of thing. That was that was super awesome. Um can't remember any other like really specific things that but yeah that 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 little sequence or i don't know if you count that as a sequence or just one move whatever that that was that was really really cool and um yeah i i did like that match um for the most part and then uh we have our main event uh chris jericho versus kenny omega um some cool stuff throughout this match we had some some chris jericho camera work in there um and uh yeah i can't that was like the the one specific thing that that i can remember from the actual match um we kept getting the the, see this match i really appreciate that the one-winged angel I uh, kept almost getting used, but Chris was prepared that he was able to get out of it. And then his new finisher, uh, what is it? The, the Judas, Judas something, Judas effect. Um, it was like a spinning back elbow, um, that nailed Kenny and he got the, uh, Chris Jericho got the win. Um, so I, yeah, I, I I like this match a lot. I think I I enjoy I enjoyed this match more than I enjoyed the Cody and Dustin match, just because there's so much blood. There's so there's a little blo- bit of blood in this one, because uh, Kenny uh, broke his nose a little bit, 
Um, <laughs> and that led to a really funny moment, like afterwards, after all, after everything, after they went out the air, it was like uh, Kenny was addressing the audience. He was like, "I I should be seeking medical attention right now," but I did his whole ending spiel. But um, yeah, after the match, uh, Chris is going on about this company for me not for the fans not for anyone it's for me because i am the best that all this happened because of me that kind of thing uh a lot said a lot better than that um but down the stairs right next to me like four seats away i was i was like seat number five or something um yeah i think it was seat number five down those stairs comes john moxley and I didn't have my camera out at that moment, so I totally missed getting a picture of him, like, 10 feet away, making his um, mind-blowing entrance. I mean, I think everybody was hoping that he was going to be there, expecting him to be number 21 in the battle run when that. Um, so, like, I think at this point, we are all kind of, at least I was, I'd like, oh, wait, he's not going to show up. That's fine. Whatever. And then he does attacks chris attacks the referee and then just brawls all out with eh, eh, with um with kenny omega just putting him like launching him off of the the top of a stack of poker chips through a table thing or a stage whatever and just and with that image of him him there on top of that stack of really big poker chip things um it uh yeah yeah it's it, i'm i'm interested i'm interested you got me hooked a little bit um i wish i could go to the next two uh events because they have the fight for the fallen um and uh fighter fest those both look like they'll be a lot of fun um but i can't um conflicts those weekends but um currently it i I'm not doing anything Labor Day weekend, so I may try to go out to All Out. Um, a little bit of a bummer that it's in Sears Center Arena again because it's only the 10,000 seats there. Because um, I f- feel like they could uh, definitely um, do more than that um, with how uh, successful this event was. But I, on the other hand, uh, I guess they booked that before uh they, they already have that booked before they knew if this this first one was going to go so well so um it's better i think it's better to be uh to underestimate um and uh over i, I don't what am i saying i don't know but uh man this ep- i said i was going to try to keep everything short with this that was an absolute lie although i could have easily <laughs> talked about all these things for twice as long or not at all double or nothing if if you will but it's um yeah i'm i'm excited to see what happens here um it looks uh like john moxley versus kenny omega i am i'm all for that 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 sounds like a pretty great match um uh hey it's gonna be hangman page versus chris jericho for the championship the AEW Championship. I don't know which event that's taking place at. Um, if it's at the next one, or if they're waiting till I'll, I don't know. But um, oh, that was another thing was that Bret Hart uh, appeared and presented um, the thing with the the the, the championship belt. Uh, but during that, Joey Janela comes out and uh, well, Hangman Page comes out first. No, not Joey. Jan- Sorry mjf comes out and um it's pretty good mjf also is, is very good i'm interested in, in seeing all of his stuff um but uh i should know i have not watched i also have not watched being the elite in a while um probably like a month maybe a month and a half i haven't watched being the elite at all but so th- there may be a lot of people that i should be more familiar with from watching that already but that is not the case either either but i i had seen mjf on there a few times and he is very um very entertaining so um as i uh, continue losing my voice 
I think I'll leave it at that. Um, Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page. That should be um, that should be interesting. Um, I'll be rooting for Page to win. Absolutely, I think everybody's going to be rooting for Page to win, especially with Chris Jericho no showing his uh or cancel. I guess not no showing because he did like inform people, but um, but that's still a no. He didn't show up to something that was planned. Anyway. I think uh, there's uh, some some solid Chris Jericho hate going around um, and uh, some solid Hangman Page and John Moxley hype going around. So um, hopefully that all keeps and that we can get some some great matches of all of them. And I think people have kind of I forgot about the whole pack pack is it pack pack situation um but uh we'll see if he comes around at some point another notable thing from the kenny omega q a now that i've talked about it's double or nothing there is that he's like it, it it's it's not gonna feel like a hundred percent um home or whatever um until everybody is here and he didn't name names but uh it's always uh, like the 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 uh, the the elite crew and uh maybe some of his uh some of his uh friends who are you know, other friends that are in other companies and stuff so we'll see how things go from here um so that's it um i did start watching the pc uh the performance center combine um it's just really really interesting i like that a lot um but i'll talk about that more in uh this week's um in the NXT and NXT UK episode, um, since I still have to watch those. Um, so I'll talk a little bit, not about the entire combine. Um, cause there's, I still have like three more hours of that. And I can watch all three hours before, um, before raw airs tonight. But, um, uh, yeah, stay tuned for all of that. Um, probably my next, uh, episode talking about all elite stuff might not even be until all out in September um unless i happen to to catch some matches here and there or something like that but um i don't know hopefully my 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 view of it is some somewhat interesting or helpful i don't know i know i would be helpful maybe i i put some aspects of it into words uh that maybe you were thinking the same thing or maybe completely disagree Whatever the case may be, let me know by tweet. I said that weird. Let me know by tweeting me at TIW Podcast. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your friends. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you like to listen. And I'll be back real soon with whatever episode I record right after this one. Um, so stay safe out there in all of the infinite multiverses. Go and see some Spiegel World and Cirque du Soleil shows. Ka is the best of the uh, best of all of them. Um, and I'll uh, catch you later here on TIW Podcast. Bye.